Hey everyone, I'm Kevin and I lead product at OpenAI. Today we're here to talk developers and agents. And in particular, we're excited to launch a bunch of new tools that make it easy for developers to build reliable and useful agents. Now, when we say agent, we mean a system that can act independently to do tasks on your behalf. And we've launched two agents this year in ChatGPT. The first is uh, Operator, which can browse the web and do things for you on the web. The second is Deep Research, which can uh, create detailed reports for you on any topic you want. So you give it a topic, and it can go off and do what might be a week's worth of research for you and come back with an answer in 15 minutes. Now, the feedback for those has been fantastic. But we want to now launch those tools and more in the API to developers. So we have spent the last couple months going around talking to developers all over the world about how we can make it easy for them to build agents. And what we've heard is that the models are ready. So with advanced reasoning, with multimodal understanding, our models can now do the kind of complex, multi-step workflows that agents need. But on the other hand, developers feel like they're having to cobble together different low-level APIs from different sources. It's difficult, it's slow, it often feels brittle. So today, we're really excited to bring that together into a series of tools uh, and, and a new API and an open source SDK to make this a lot easier. So with that, let me introduce the team. Yeah. Hi, I'm Ilan. I'm an engineer on the developer experience team. I'm Steve. I'm an engineer on the API team. And I'm Nikunj. I work on the API product team. So let's dive into all the stuff that we are launching today. Like Kevin mentioned, we have three new built-in tools. We have a new API and an open source SDK. Uh, starting off with the built-in tools, the first tool that we're announcing today is called the web search tool. The web search tool allows our models to access information from the internet so that your responses and the, the output that you get is up to date and factual. Uh, the web search tool is the same tool that powers ChatGPT search and it's powered by a fine-tuned model under the hood. So this is the fine-tuned GPT-40 or 40 mini that is really good at looking at large amounts of data retrieved from the web, finding the relevant pieces of information, and then clearly citing it in its response. Um, in a benchmark that uh, measures uh, these type of things, uh, which is called simple QA, uh, you can see that GPT-40 hits a high score of uh, state-of-the-art score of 90%. So that's the first tool. Steve, do you want to tell us about the second one? Yeah, the second tool is actually my favorite tool, and this is the file search tool. Now, we launched the file search tool last year uh, in the Assistance API as a way for developers to upload, chunk, embed their documents, and then do really easily, do uh, rag really easily over those documents. Now, we're really excited to be launching two new features in the file search tool today. The first is metadata filtering. So with metadata filtering, you can add attributes to your files to be able to easily filter them down to just the ones that are the most relevant for your query. The second is a direct search endpoint. So now you can directly search your vector stores without your queries being filtered through the model first. Nice, so you have web search for the public data, file search for the, the private data that you have. And then the third tool that we are launching is the computer use tool. The computer use tool is operator in the API but it allows you to control the computers that you are operating. So this could be a virtual machine, it could be a legacy application that just has a graphical user interface and you have no API access to it. If you want to automate those kind of tasks and, and build applications on that, you can use the computer use tool, which comes with the computer use model. Um, so this is the same model that is used by operator in ChatGPT. It has Sora benchmarks on uh, OS World, Web Arena, Web Voyager. Early user feedback on the Kua model and the tool has been super, super positive, so I'm really excited to see what all of you build with it. All right, so those are the three tools. Um, and while we were building these tools and thinking of getting them out, we also wanted to take a first principles approach at designing the best API for these tools. Um, we released chat completions, I think, in March 2023 mm -hmm. alongside GBD 3.5 Turbo. And every single API interaction at that time was just text in and text out. Since then, we've, we've uh, introduced multimodality. So you have images, you have audio. We are introducing tools today. And you also have products like O1 Pro, Deep Research, Operator that make these multiple model turns and multiple tool calls behind the scenes. So we wanted to build an API primitive that is flexible enough. It, it supports multiple turns, it supports tools. Um, and we're calling this new API the Responses API. And to show you the Responses API, I'm gonna hand it over to Steve. Cool, let's go ahead and take a look at the Responses API. 
So if you've used chat completions before, this will look really familiar to you. You select some context, you pick a model, and you get a response. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. <laughs> uh, and it's always hilarious. So, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so to demonstrate the power of the Responses API, we're going to be building sort of a personal stylist assistant. So let's start off by giving it some instructions. You are a personal stylist. You're only typing in front of like 50,000 <laughs> people right now. Don't worry about it. <laughs> cool. And we'll say, uh, we'll get rid of this. And we'll say, what are some of the latest trends? The joke's in the context. The joke is in the context. <laughs> Let's see what it says. <laughs> OK, cool. Okay. Great. Um, but no personal stylist assistant is complete unless it understands what its users like. So in order to demonstrate this, we've created a vector store that has uh, some you know, like some entries, almost some diary entries of what people on the team have been wearing. Um, we've oh, kind of been. That's not weird at all. It's not weird at all. I would just let it happen. Uh, <laughs> we've kind of been following people around the office and kind of like understanding what they've what they've been up to. So we we we, uh, we yeah. There's a whole there's a team there's a team on it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and add the file search tool, and uh, I'll copy in my vector store ID. And here, I can actually filter down this, the files in this vector store to just the ones that are relevant to the person that we want to style. So uh, in this case, let's start with Elon. We'll go ahead and filter down to his <laughs> username. <you>. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll come back here, and we'll refresh. And we'll say, uh, can you briefly summarize what Elon likes to wear? I often ask ChatGPT this question. Yeah, but it never knows. And now it can actually tell you what Elon looks like. <laughs> cool. So Elon has a distinct and consistent style characterized by a Miami chic. That's really awesome. Yeah. Um, so the file search tool is a great way to bring information about your users into your application. But in order to be able to create a really good application for this personal stylist, we want to be able to bring in fresh data from around the web um, so that we have both the newest information, and also stuff that's really relevant to your users. So in order to demonstrate that, I'll add the web search tool. Cool. The web search tool is really great because you can also add, you can also add data about like, where your user is. So let's try with somebody else. Kevin, are you going to be taking any trips anytime soon? Let's say Tokyo. OK, cool. Tokyo. So I'll put in Tokyo here. And we'll swap in Kevin. And the Responses API is really cool because it can do multiple things at once. It can call a file search tool, it can call the web search tool, and it can give you a final answer just in one API response. So in order to tell it exactly what we want, let's give it some instructions. And it'd be good if I knew how to code well. <laughs> Great. You say so, you're an engineer here. Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> in training. <laughs> So uh, what, we want the, what we want the model to do is when it's asked to recommend products, we want it to use the file search tool to understand what Kevin likes, and then use the web search tool to find a store near him where he can buy something that he might be interested in. So let's go back and say, uh, find me a jacket um, that I would like nearby. And what the model will do is it will uh, issue a file search tool call to understand what kinds of things Kevin likes to wear. And then it will issue a web search tool call to then go and find uh, stuff that Kevin would like based on where he is. So the model was able to, uh, just in the scope of one API call, find a bunch of Patagonia stores in Tokyo. <laughs> just for you, Kevin. Which, which go, it actually corresponds to Kevin's preferences. He's been wearing a lot of Patagonia around the office. So, um, but no personal stylist assistant would be complete unless they could actually go and make purchases on your behalf. So in order to do that, let's demonstrate the computer use tool. So we'll go ahead and add this. We're using the computer use preview model and the computer use preview tool. And we will ask, um, help me find my friend, Kevin, a new Patagonia jacket. What's your favorite color, Kevin? Uh, let's go with black. And black. Can't have too many black Patagonia jackets. <laughs> and what the model will do is it will ask us for a screenshot. And we have a Docker container running locally on this computer. And we will go ahead and send that screenshot to the model. It will look at the state of the computer and issue another action. Click, drag, move, type. And then we will execute that action. 
take another screenshot, send it back to the model, and then it will continue in this fashion until it feels that it's completed the task, and then return a final answer. So while this is kind of going and doing its thing, we'll hand it back to Nikunj. Yeah, awesome. So these are some really cool tools and a really flexible API for you to build uh, agents. And, and you, have, you have amazing building blocks to, to do that now. But for those of you who have built more complex applications, like say you're building a customer support agent, it's not always about just having one agent that's sort of the personal style, uh, stylist. You also have some uh, agentic application that's doing your refunds. You have another thing that's answering customer support uh, FAQ queries. You have something else that's dealing with orders and billing, et cetera. And to make these applications easy to build, we released an SDK last year called Swarm. And Swarm made it easy to do agent orchestration. This was uh, supposed to be an experimental and educational thing, but so many of you took it to production anyway. <laughs> so uh, you're like forcing our hand over here. <laughs> and, and so uh, we've decided to take Swarm and make it production ready, add a bunch of new features, and we're going to be rebranding it to be called the Agents SDK. Ilan built uh, a Swarm uh, and helped build it, so I'm going to hand it over to him to tell you more about how it works. Yeah, thanks, Nikunj. Yeah, so. Uh, in my time at OpenAI, I've spent a lot of time working with enterprises and builders to help them build out agentic experiences. And I've seen firsthand how pretty simple ideas can actually grow in complexity like when you actually go to implement them. And so the idea with the Agents SDK is to keep simple ideas simple to implement while allowing you to build more complex and robust ideas still in a pretty like st straightforward and simple way. Mm -hmm. So um, let's take a look at what Steve had before in the demo, but implemented using the Agents SDK. It's going to look very similar at first. We have our agent defined here. We have some instructions. Um, and we also have both of the tools, file search tool, web search tool that we had before. Is this using like responses under the hood? Yeah, so yeah. by default, this is using the responses API. But we actually support multiple vendors. Anything that really fits the chat completions um, shape can work with the agents SDK. Nice. So um, during the practice runs, we actually, we actually accidentally ordered like many, many Patagonias. So <laughs> I'm sorry, we're going to have to. I don't understand. What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> we're helping you here. Uh, we want to return some of them. Uh, and so to do that, I could usually just add in like a returns tool and like add more to this prompt and get it to work. But the problem with that is you start to mix all of this business logic, which makes your agents a little bit harder to test. And so this is the power of multiple agents, is you can actually separate your concerns and develop and test them separately. So to do so, let's actually introduce a, like, an agent specifically to deal with this sorts of uh, like returns. So I'm going to load mine in. And great, so we still have our agent from before. But you can see there's also this new agent, the customer support agent here. And I've defined a couple tools for it to use. The guest pa get past orders, and then submit refund request. And um, you might notice these are just regular Python functions, as this is actually a feature that we uh, people really loved in Swarm that we brought over to the Agents SDK, which is we'll take your Python functions and look at the type inference or look at the type signatures, and then automatically generate the JSON schema that the models need to use to perform those function calls. And then once they do, we actually run the code and then return the results. So you can just define these functions um, as, as they are. Now I've given them. Um, now we have our two agents, right? We have the stylist agent and we have the customer support re refunds agent. So how do we interact with both of them as a user? This is where the notion of handoffs come in, and a handoff is actually a pretty simple idea that's pretty powerful. And it's when you have one conversation where one agent is handling it, and then it hands it off to another, where you keep the entire conversation the same, but behind the scenes you just swap out the instructions and the tools. Um, and this gives you a way to triage conversations and like load in the correct context for each part of the conversation. So what we've done here is created this triage agent that can hand off to the stylist agent or the customer support agent. So enough talking. Let's actually see this in action. So I'm going to save and do, you know, um, I think we may have ordered one too many Patagonias. <laughs> can you help me return? I don't understand. I know, I know, I'm so sorry. I can get you one later. <laughs> so what just happened here is it started off by transferring, remember, we're starting with the triage agent, um, to the customer support agent. And this is just a function call that I'll show you in a second. Um, and then the customer support agent proactively called the get past orders function, where we can see all of Kevin's Patagonias. I think you'll be OK. <laughs> um, cool. So 
To actually see what happened behind the scenes, usually you might need to add some debugging statements by hand. But one of the things that the Agents SDK brings right out of the box is monitoring and tracing. So I'm going to go over to the tracing UI that we have on our platform um, to actually take a look what just happened. So these are some of the previous runs that we've had. I'm just refreshing the page. Um, and we can see the last one. Uh, and this last one, you can actually see exactly what happened. We started with a triage agent, which um, we sent the request to, made a handoff, and then switched over to the customer support agent, which called the function. Now, uh, we can see what the original input was. And handoffs are first class objects in this dashboard. So you can see not only which agent we actually handed it off to, but any that it, like, it had as options that it did not, which is actually a really useful feature for debugging. Um, afterward, once we're in the customer support agent, you can see the get, get past orders function call with any input params. Here there were none. Um, and then the output is just, again, just all of Kevin's very monotonous history. Um, <laughs> and then finally, we can get to the end where you get a response. And so these are some of the features that you get right out of the box with the Agents SDK. There's a few more. You, uh, we also have built-in guardrails that you can enable. We have lifecycle events. Um, and importantly, this is an open source framework. So we're going to keep building it out. Um, and you can install it like very soon or right now. So you can just do pip install openai middle dash agents. And we'll have an, one for the JavaScript coming soon. Um, but to close this off, let's, um, Let's let's actually perform the, the refund. So uh, you know, uh, you know what? I'm sorry, Kevin. Get rid of all of them. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to wear? <laughs> Kevin's going to be cold. Yeah. Let's see. It's a lot of them. There we go. <laughs> it, takes, it takes a while to return so many categories. Yeah. yeah. And so what what happens under the hood? How do you how do you debug this? How do you understand more about what's going on? Yeah, yeah, so that we can all do back in the in the tracing in the tracing UI. So yeah. this is a pretty nice, straightforward way to build out these experiences. Yeah, yeah. Nikun Jola, awesome. Pass it back right. to you. I'm so excited for all of you to have access to all of these tools. Uh, and before we wrap up, I wanted to make two additional points. First, we've introduced the Responses API, but the Chat Completions API is not going away. We're going to continue supporting it with new models and capabilities. There'll be certain capabilities that require built-in tool use, and there'll be certain models and agentic products that we release in the future that will require, it, will require them, and those will be available in Responses API only. Responses API features are a superset of what chat, chat completions support, so whenever you decide to migrate over, it should be a pretty straightforward migration to you, and we hope you love the developer experience of Responses because we put a lot of thought into that. The second point I wanted to make was around the Assistance API. We built the Assistance API based on all the great feedback that we got from all of our beta users. And uh, you know, we, we wouldn't be here without, uh, without all of the learnings that we had during the Assistance API phase. We are going to be adding more features to the Responses API so that it can support everything that the Assistance API can do. And once that happens, we'll be sharing a migration guide that makes it really easy for all of you to migrate your applications from assistance to responses without any loss of functionality or data. We'll give you ample time to move things over. And once we are, once we are done with that, we plan to sunset the assistance API sometime in 2026. We'll be sharing a lot more details about this uh, uh, offline as well. But yeah, that's it for me. I'll hand it over to Kevin to wrap us up. Awesome. Well, we're super excited to announce the, the Responses API. And the idea that we can bring, take a single powerful API and bring together a whole bunch of different tools, from reg and file search to web search to KUA and our uh, operator uh, computer use APIs. So, uh, now, you can count on us to continue building powerful new models and bring more intelligence to bring more powerful tools to help you build better agents. 2025 is going to be the year of the agent. It's the year that ChatGPT and our developer tools go from just answering questions to actually doing things for you out in the real world. We're super excited about that. We're just getting started. We know you are too, and we can't wait to see what you build. <laughs>